RTX 3080 upgrade. Hello everybody. Welcome to Builder Buy. Doing this upgrade we got five things we're going to cover and we also got five tests we're going to talk about. Now we didn't do all the tests but we're going to show you some things that we did because when it comes down to the final solution it's all about bang for the buck and uh, what test serves your needs based on what you're going to be doing. And some of the tests we've used before in the past didn't really work for us this time. Cinebench was one of them. Spec View Perf was another one. So not running those two tests for reasons I won't get into. Uh, we found some other tests that we think that you might get a kick out of. So as we get into the tests, we're also going to look at the issue with the driver. There were some people having trouble with a BSOD on Windows, and BSOD is not a good thing to happen. So we're going to do an unboxing, an install, and a spec check. We'll show some test results, and then we'll talk about the technology. And as we get into the technology, we'll talk about the driver. And as for the test, i got to tell you, there's one test I found that I've never run before from, from Unigen. Wow. I'm going to tell you, you have to run that test. Orally and visually, that is a stunning and stimulating test. All I'm going to do is show you the results, because I don't want to get into issues with copyright, because they have some music that plays. And uh, YouTube is getting really kind of freaky about that. That's an automatic thing. So I will just say you have to run that test, but I'll get to it in a minute. So what we're going to do is an unboxing. And as we talk about the technology, I want to look at slot and lane assignments on the board. So let's go overhead. Now right now we have an EGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti in there. And uh, what we'll probably have to do is I want to look at the, the width and the spacing we have on the cards because this is a two slot card. So that's 16 lanes. Right now in an eight lane slot, we have the Thunderbolt 3 card. When we start working with this, when we pull this one out and put the new one in, we're going to also pull the Thunderbolt 3 card out because Thunderbolt is very finicky about drivers for the motherboard chipset and also for the video card. That all has to be current. And since we're going to be blowing out the drivers and putting in a new one, we don't want to go through a BSOD while we're dealing with this. So this card will come out. And I want to show you the space relations while we've left this card in from the last video because I'm going to just physically set that card down in there where you can see kind of where it would fit if you did have two video cards. Now, you're not going to do that. We don't do that anymore. Only way you have two cards and bridge them is if you're using an RTX 3090. And if you're using a three-slot card, then it would cover this slot. And we still don't have all our issues with lane assignment with this card yet, but I still think it goes back to the root port selector that's hardwired. Uh, we're going to be doing some Thunderbolt 3 stuff very, very soon once we can get out of this NVMe. But I've been trying to do this for a month, so I'm eager now to get this video card done. So that's what's in there. i got to turn the machine off, and we'll go to the next one. Okay, i got a spec sheet I want to show you as we compare the uh, RTX 2080 Ti to the RTX 3080 for what comparison there is. Now this little document we put together is for the RTX 2080 Ti and the RTX 3080. Uh, the things we focused on are the NVIDIA CUDA cores, 4352, we've doubled them to 8704. We've gone from 11 gigs of GDDR6 to 10 gigs of GDDR6X. The big differences, though, are PCI Express 3.0 versus PCI Express 4.0. We're going to be using the NVIDIA Studio drivers and the system requirements, which is kind of significant. They go from recommending a 250-watt power supply to a 750-watt power supply. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's a big deal. We've been putting in 650 and 750 watt power supplies for probably about six years now. And uh, to go to a bigger power supply, uh, my point is, and what I'm saying, it's not overkill to put in a power supply of about 1,000 watts because we have a lot of stuff we're putting in. Yes, we still have spinning drives, archive drives, storage drives. Uh, we've done a video on that, so I won't get into that. But I'm just saying with all the stuff that's going on in here, you've got that surge to bring that system up and running. I want plenty of power on that machine because it's only going to use what it's going to need, but I want to make sure there's enough power to handle the platform. So it reinforces the uh, power supply we have so we could go from the video card we had to the video card that we're upgrading to. And i got to tell you, these things are scarce to hen's teeth, but if you can get your hands on one, this is the way to go. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait and get in line. Like I told Vincent, you know, there's a process. Pick the vendor you want to get the video card from, register with that vendor, then sign up for them to let you know when it's available. That's what we did for the one we're going to show. We signed up with three at EVGA, and we're going to be using an EVGA RTX 3080. So I'm stoked. I hope you guys are excited to see this. There's not a whole lot other than we're going to look at the card physically and examine it and compare the two. But once we get it installed and go through the driver issue, I think the big thing to take away from this is, number one, we're going to take Thunderbolt 3 out so we can get the drivers done. Now, 
Uh, realistically, what I should do is uninstall the driver. I'm not going to. So Windows is going to go through several reboots until it re-recognizes the new card. But when I install the new video driver, when it picks up, and once we're good and everything's all hunky-dory, then we'll come back and put Thunderbolt 3 back in. Part of my reason for doing that, I do not want a BSOD. Those were a hassle. The last one we had, we had to do a complete format because the driver, we couldn't, we couldn't pick up the driver and uh, get it replaced. So it's just easier to reinstall. So we're getting to the point with the drive, with what we have installed, I don't want to have to go back to square one, which means clone image or backup, which we'll probably be doing a video on that pretty soon. But video card right now. So I was really surprised when I got in the queue because uh, when I got notice from this from EVGA, even though I signed up for three cards, I got notice on one. And you've got about six to eight hours, and I think I was about four hours into it. So I was like, ooh, I better get on the stick. And fortunately, we were able to get in the queue and got one. So we got ahead of the uh, bots. Okay, we're going to do an unboxing. And when appropriate, we'll go overhead. Just a brown box. We've got a label on one side. Gingerly open this up. And why are we doing an unboxing? I've been told by some of you guys, and I want to thank everybody for watching. Some of y'all like to see unboxings. So we're going to see this as it goes the first time coming out. So as we open the box, that's pretty much it. One brown box, one video card with a bag. The nice thing about it, the box has a seal just like the last one did, except the seal on this one's a little bit different. It's interesting, the, uh, the line cut on the uh, 2080 Ti was at, the, at an angle, which made the box kind of weird to, to slide the top off. This is more like a standard box used to be, where we have a seal on the top and a seal on the bottom. So that way I've still got a regular box, which I appreciate. So we're going to slice that open. This is long overdue. There's other stuff we've been wanting to share with you guys, but we need to do this. So I'm going to get this out. We'll take a look at it. I want to compare the two before I pull this out. And when I pull this out, I've got the bag ready to put it back in the original bag. And how I know it's the original bag, EVGA has their logo on the bag. So I know the video card that was in here. So we'll keep that handy and pull this card out and see what we've got. We've also got our uh, part number and serial number. And uh, I will say, whatever video cards you get, be sure and register with the manufacturer. For example, like with EVGA for the extended warranty. And I've got a little piece up here in the top, port and notice. There's a bracket here, a retention bracket. A retention bracket for attaching to some select chassis. To learn more, please scan below the QR code. Do that on the smartphone, take it right to it. Good to know. And that was tucked up here in the side in the box. I'll set that aside for right now. I don't think we're going to need that, but we'll see. And uh, good looking card. And what I don't like is it's not in an anti-static bag. It's in this plastic. I don't get why vendors are doing that. I don't, I don't care for that. But uh, the plastic, if you'll notice, it doesn't fully open up it's a it's not two halves it's a it's a folded piece of plastic so it still is held together at the bottom so we'll open up the sandwich and we can see where the fans are so and a little piece of paper there GeForce GTX installation guide thank you always a good idea to read the manual it's interesting on the fans they have uh, got their logo on the blades that's interesting instead of being smooth it's got that texture to them that works for them there's also stickers Protective stickers, so those need to be pulled off. So we got three of those. All of these protective surfaces. Very carefully and very gingerly peel that out. What I want to look at is the physical size of the card. And we've got some more plastic to pull off. Wow, quite a bit. This whole cowling, this shroud, has plastic on it. So we had not only plastic on the three fans, but we've also got this around here to pull off. So we'll keep, keep peeling. And the card has a protector on it to protect the slot insertion point. Appreciate that. Do I keep those? Yes, I do. Have I ever put one back on? No, I have not. Then why do you keep it? Well, potential. I might. It's something I can throw away later if I decide to. But it's not every day I go around pulling a video card out of a machine and upgrading so soon. We haven't even had time to get this thing up and running. We've been so busy with the components. Everybody's really into NVMe and Thunderbolt, so had questions today about those very things which means we're going to need to do a, uh, an NVMe bootable RAID. We're going to be doing that soon. And we'll also have a couple of audio interfaces to do with Thunderbolt 3 that we need to do that we had a question about today. It's just, you guys are great. I appreciate your patience. Okay, the card is out. We're looking at it. I see where the fans are plugged in on the bottom right here. Three fans plugged in. Got a real nice grill on that for the heat sink. I can see a piece of copper underneath that's directly over the chipset. So we're looking at the bottom end. On this end, all the video cards now are pretty much gone to supporting four monitors. We'll turn that around. So we have 
one HDMI, and three full-size display port. A nice grill, and you can see the size of that cooler in there. On top, another view, we have two 8-pin power taps, and we've got the EVGA GeForce RTX 3080. I expect that will light up just like the other one did. And this is the XC3. That's the one we got our hands on. So I'm stoked and I'm thankful. On this end, again, we can see the cooler across here, and it's in red EVGA. And we have a protective panel on the back plate. And this back plate is interesting. This is um, quite a bit of machining went into this back plate. Instead of being solid, it's perforated with a lot of air circulation holes. Very curious. Those have always been solid. So be sure and pull that film off. And then we see the uh, exposed part where the cooler sits for the processor. And we've also got over here EVGA. That probably lights up, but once that's in the case, there's no way we're going to see it. Because once it goes down, I'll go ahead and pull this off for the moment. You don't want to touch that. You don't want to handle it because touching it, you fingerprints and uh, it causes oxidation and you don't want that. So what I want to demonstrate and show, so there's a two slot card and there's a two slot card. Uh, the uh, 3080 and the 2080 Ti. Now I'm not putting these in the machine. I'm just setting them here right now to give you some idea, physical size, how they look and how they would mount. And based on the two in their comparison of details, the 3080 is a little bit longer. The reason they look about the same is because on the 2080 Ti, I have the special bracket that allows me to have power routed and covered so you don't see that. I didn't get that for this. I'm going to just leave this with the regular power taps. But I wanted to give you some idea of space relations, how everything sits. There's just enough room for everything if all four slots were full. So we're going to pull that out and set it aside, pull this card out, and we're going to take Thunderbolt out. So we've done the unboxing. We're going to do the install now. We did a spec check. We showed that, which I thought was pretty interesting. You know, really, when you're building a machine for content creation, it's, it's all about uh, rendering. And that's going to be interesting because as content creation goes for rendering, it's all about CUDA cores, which is what we've now doubled. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal what we have access to on one video card. And the reason I point that out, because when we get to some of the tests, it matters. Some of the tests that I'm going to show you, you're going to have to have the full version of the software to take advantage of the capability to do the rendering on the GPU. It is what it is. Okay, we're going to pull these out now. First, we'll take out Thunderbolt, set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect power from that card, and I'm just going to leave that card setting over upside down out of the way while we monkey with this. It's not going to hurt anything. We'll get this video card out, pull our taps. I like this bracket that EVGA has to go around the video card to make it a neater looking wiring, but what I don't like are these little covers on the side. One of them kept popping off, and when I originally got this to insert it, one of the pins inside was not properly lined up to go down, so I had to pull the caps off, loosen it, put it back on, and put these, put these neoprene covers back in. One of them kept popping out. So this time, I'm just gonna go like we always do. And for those of you that are into neatness and don't like my unneatness, you'll just have to look past that. Okay, good looking card, and it's interesting comparing the uh, back plane on the two, whereas the, uh, and I didn't remember this, the 2080 Ti, you can get a good look here at this bracket. I like this, it's a neat idea, but those little covers right there were annoying. As we look at the two cards and compare the back, you can see the difference. How this had cutouts, but the perforations in this back plane are uh, much more significant. Now this had some stamping in it to give it stability. I guess this has enough stability with what they've done. You see the red line here, that's solid. It's, uh, it looks pretty good. Anyway, I want to show you the, the differences. The physical size of the two, like I said, is about the same looking at them out of the case. The reason these look the same, again, remember, it's because of this bracket to take power up and out so that it has a neater looking install. Folks, once the lid's on this, I will never notice any of that. So for, the, for those that are into that, I understand, but I'm not. Now, something else I'll point out on the other side of this, if you look at the uh, 2080 Ti, that had two fans for this particular model. And this, of course, has three fans. And I got one more little bracket here to pull off. I'll pull that rubber sleeve off. And that'll secure with uh, one screw, but I'll put two in it. So that gives you some idea of what they look like on this side. Pretty much about the same. Of course, I've got anti-static gloves on, so I'm not concerned about the connector right now. For those that are interested, I thought you might want to see that. I always like to examine the components because uh, sometimes you learn things that you wouldn't know otherwise. And like we always say, details matter. I was in hopes we'd get this video done before Christmas, and uh, boy, we are pushing it. But well, we're going to make it. And something else to be mindful of, this particular card 
had a, a USB-C connection on it. So if I were to look in Device Manager, there's a USB-C connection that was on here for a virtual reality headset that will now disappear, which, which, which is fine because it wasn't going to get used. It was a new technology that came and went. Okay, that card is out. Now we'll get the other one in. Pretty simple. In we go. My two power taps, and these are separate power taps. I could have run, run one tap bridged, but I don't like to do that. So these are two physical separate taps because that was my plan when I upgraded this. And these are both set for 8 pin. So I'll get the card in first, then I'll plug in the power. And because the way I've got the power routed, I'm going to have to redo this because that was set for being down. And I'm going to have to take these and pull them up over here. So it's going to be a little bit more involved. For those of you that leave components in a machine, you build machines one way. For people like me who build a machine and we're changing things in and out so we can show stuff, I build machines so that I can facilitate getting things in and out a whole lot quicker. But I wired this to make it look clean because when we did the uh, video about the case, some people were freaking out because it was, it was not neat. Well, priorities. Number one is smoke test. Number two is functionality. We always put function over form. I'm just saying. So the video card's in the slot. We are secure. Now we'll get our two screws set. And because we're going to have to reroute the power to get it up over here, that means I've got to turn the case up and get on the other side. Well, to get on the other side of the case, that means that Thunderbolt card needs to come completely out. So change one thing, changes everything. But I would rather unplug the uh, Thunderbolt card than to have it installed, get the BSOD, and have to deal with that. So I hope it helps looking at the uh, slots and lane assignments. And for those that haven't watched any of our videos before, the machine we're working in, this is PCI Express 4.0. This is a Gigabyte TRX40 Designare motherboard. And we have 256 gigs of RAM in it. It now has a 3080 Ti video card in it. And that's an EVGA. And I will put a link up to this so everybody will get a chance to see it in case you're interested. That's what it looks like. Video card's in, secured. Well, that was interesting. The doorbell just rang, and uh, there's our next video, folks. We're going to be looking at the uh, Sabrent. So the next video will be an unboxing of a Sabrent 2 terabyte, and this is the uh, second generation PCI Express 4.0 drive. So pretty cool. Now, I should be able to pull these cables up. Let's see if we can pull these up to get this out. I have enough there for it. I tried to wire this in preparation for this change. And some people would say, well, why did you get a 2080 Ti to start with? Well, it's been quite some time ago when I got the 2080 Ti, and that was back when the uh, RTX 30 whatever were all just a uh, pipe dream. Well, that reminds me, there's some information coming out now about the new uh, Threadripper Pro. It looks like there's a workstation class motherboard coming out by Gigabyte. We have an idea of the chipset. We still don't know if it's, if it's specifically correct according to AMD. But uh, again, six to nine months, we should be able to do something on one of those. I thought about doing a separate video about that, but I'll just mention it now. So for those interested, stay tuned. I'll update you when we know more. By tugging on this, the grommet for the uh, case has kind of slipped out. So I'm trying to get that back in without having to flip the case over. Done. And I think I have enough power that I can pull. And I do. Fantastic. Okay. I took a little bit of doing. Okay, we have enough power leads, so we'll get our two and then our block of six. And I have found it easier to stick the two in first and then stick in the six. I've tried putting them in together and they just sometimes don't quite want to play nice. So I'll do the same thing on this and I'll get the two in, then I'll get the six. The two just sits there. The block of six has the uh, lock that holds it in. Okay, power taps are clipped in and I've still got a decent lead. I'll leave that over kind of to the side. I'm going to leave Thunderbolt just kind of hanging. It's not touching anything. Power lead on that is fine. We power this up. Windows is going to get a little strange. We're going to have to go through some reboots to get that up. Now, when this comes back up on screen, I will show you on screen when I can, but it's going to be going back and forth. So I may not show you some of that because it'll be total blackout. But I'm still here. Always do a system check. Card is clear. Don't have to worry about that. Thunderbolt is out. Video cards secured, attached. Power is attached and power is in a safe position. And I want to make sure nothing interferes with those fans. Okay, now we are ready to power back on. So we'll plug in power first. Then we need to plug in our video for HDMI because everything we do goes out SDI. That allows us to do our video switching. So for this, the input I'm going to see, excuse me, for this, the output I'll see, I come out HDMI, I go into a decimator 
uh, MDHX converter. That then allows me to take it to the video switches, which is what you see. And a separate feed for HDMI comes out to the monitor that I can see. Pretty cool, the magic of uh, broadcast. So I'm going to turn on the power supply. I'm going to turn it on. And I expect it'll get a little goofy when we get into Windows. We'll see what happens. And, oh, that's pretty. We got lights, so that pulsates. Uh, that's interesting. This time, this, this part doesn't light up. The EVGA lights up and changes colors, but the GeForce RTX 3080 does not. Interesting. So the system's going to uh, interrogate itself. I heard it post. Seems like the computer is booting a little faster. You have to remember, we've gone from PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4.0. And what I have found, PCI Express 4.0 is supposed to be auto-configured. PCI Express 3.0 stuff on this board was supposed to be configured manually, but it's not. It's configuring automatically since we've done the BIOS update. We'll see now if Windows comes up. It says it was booting. We'll see. Yeah, we get the Windows flag. Now we get the little dial. I expect Windows is going to do this. We'll have to reboot several times. I'll show you what I can as I can because as we talk about the technology, we need to talk about the driver. There was a driver update because there was a, a BSOD with a pass driver. Yeah, we're up. Okay, so we're up on the desktop. Now Windows is going to go through its process of interrogating the machine and it doesn't see it like it's supposed to because this is uh, out of whack. I'm just going to look at display settings to see what it sees. I like good old device manager. Display adapter, Microsoft basic display. Okay, we need to uh, run the driver install and when we do the driver install, this is important to note. We're not using a gaming driver. We don't want all that bloatware. We're only using the studio driver. We want a stable driver for content creation. But when we install that driver, Windows should blink several times. And, and when we do this, we'll do a clean install. It'll automatically uninstall the old driver. And we'll be back up and running. I've already downloaded the driver, but what I will say, I want to show you. Let me get this installed right quick because I don't want to monkey around and get a blue screen. This is driver number 46089. The other driver we were using was 452.06. So we're going to upgrade to the new driver. And as we've mentioned before doing Thunderbolt, you want to make sure you've got your chipset drivers installed and they're current. You want to make sure your video card drivers are installed and that they are current. Now this is going to go to C drive. My C drive is an NVMe drive. So I need to take a look right quick and see where my data drive is, which happens to be F. So instead of installing these drivers to C, I'm going to go to F, a spinning drive. So I don't have all that bloatware on my C drive. Yes, I have the space, but I don't want to consume it with stuff like this. So as storage goes in this machine, I've got a C drive, which is the boot drive. I'll have another drive for instruments, virtual instruments, that it'll be sitting next to it. Then we have a couple of spinning drives, one internal spinning drive and one spinning drive externally that can be removed to transfer data. The internal spinning drive is what we're using to install this driver from. That's where I copy files. That's where I copy stuff after I've rendered. Here it is, version 6.0. Okay, NVIDIA driver and GeForce Experience. All we want is the driver. We don't want any bloatware. Now we have Express or Custom. I'm going to go to Custom because I want to see what's going on. When the screen starts flashing, I'll flip inputs. It started doing the install. Okay, Microsoft is trying to recognize the uh, video card. When we do the install, a lot of times uh, with Windows, when it does updates, it'll blow out your HD audio driver. You have to remember what HD audio driver you're talking about. Anything that goes through HDMI is video and audio. And that HD audio driver is for that HDMI. That's for the video card. You have to remember that. And we'll do the PhysX software. And right here, we're going to perform a clean install. A clean installation restores all NVIDIA settings to the default value and removes any profiles you have created. That's exactly what I want. We're upgrading the video card. So we'll click on Next. RTX Studio Systems, now with three months of Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, I had forgotten about that. I could click on this and go to it, but since we're doing drivers, I'll put up a link to this and I can share it with you later. I believe Adobe Creative Cloud right now has a 30% off discount good until, I want to say the 4th of January. I'll see if I can find that link and put that up for you as well. Create Anywhere, RTX Studio Systems, now with three months of Adobe Creative Cloud. Hmm, I think the 30% off would probably be a better deal, but, and it, it's blowing through that. I shouldn't be doing that because while we're doing these drivers. We need to get these drivers installed. Preparing to restart. Restart in less than 60 seconds. Okay, the system's gonna reboot. So we're gonna flip back and we'll reboot. And I'll take you back as soon as the system's back up and running. Restart now. So I wanted to show you the process because I think it's a pretty simple and straightforward process. While that's working up, I wanna show you something else. You can see the close proximity we have here from the video card to the CPU cooler. And if you'll notice the head on that screwdriver where that ridge is at, 
there's a dark line where my finger points. That's about how much space you've got. Measurement wise, I would put that at right at just over an eighth of an inch and just under three sixteenths. So they're close, they're not touching, but they're close. So the way these work together, they keep each other cool. Now what's interesting is the fans on this video card have not kicked in. They're not running. And I find that very, very interesting. Let me see if I can turn this up and show you. I can only go so far because I got a power cable here. But those fans are not turning. Not at all. They have not kicked in. So it'll be curious when we start doing rendering with the GPU to see what those do to start, start running. Because it's got a significant heat sink on it. I wanted to point that out. And once this is finished, then of course we'll get the uh, Thunderbolt card back in. Okay, we're back into Windows installing drivers. And we can see what's been done. So PhysX, a newer or same version, HD audio drivers installed, and the graphics driver, 460.89. So we did a system check, a license agreement, the options, we did the install, now we'll finish. And again, this is version 4.60.89. We're only installing what we need. Wow, they blew out my wallpaper. That's kind of curious. Don't uh, know why they did that. Guess I'll take a look, see if I can figure it out. So we'll do personalize, almost like a default setting. Still there. Fantastic. Okay, got my wallpaper back. I don't keep stuff in documents. I put everything under shares. So when I'm on the network and I reach across, it's just easier to put stuff in those shares so I can find it. And um, apparently they blew that out. Okay, so unboxing. We got the install. Video card's up and running. We've done a spec check. Let's go back to that right quick. RTX 2080 Ti. We, and we've gone now to the 3080. We've gone from 4352 CUDA cores to 8704 CUDA cores. Memory is close to the same, 11 gigs versus 10 gigs. And we've gone from PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4. And we're using the NVIDIA Studio driver, the latest version. And it talks about the system requirement for power, going from a 250 watt power supply to a 750 watt power supply, just for the video card. So at any rate, that's probably the simplest and easiest I've uh, had a time of putting a video card in. I was expecting some problems. I've had problems before. Went really smooth. So the next thing to do is we're going to power this down. We'll put our Thunderbolt 3 back in and we should have Thunderbolt support back up and running. So next step, power down we go. So if you're thinking about upgrading your video card and you got a reason for it, this card I think is probably the best bang for the buck. We had some questions. Somebody wanted to go to a 3090 and that's when we got into that in the last video about slots and lane assignments about how that was all going to work out. So I won't go into it again, but uh, food for thought. Machine is off. Turn off the power supply. Drain it. And good. And then we will disconnect. Power supply is disconnected. Now let's go overhead. Okay, Thunderbolt 3, here we come. We'll get our power back on, which is two six-pin power taps. We're going to be doing at least three more videos on Thunderbolt. One about Thunderbolt 3 as it relates to the technology to better understand what it actually does and what it doesn't do. And as uh, I was asked today about Thunderbolt 3, someone was talking about their motherboard, the X570. It's really confusing on some of the motherboards what does support Thunderbolt 3 and what does not. All I could tell was the motherboard that the gentleman had, which was X570, uh, based on version 1, didn't support it, but I couldn't see the connector on the version 2 of the motherboard. So I recommended another motherboard that had it, and I told him where it should be right next to the SATA ports. He had somebody else look at the board and said, those four little pins next to the SATA ports, those four pins are there. I said, then you've got Thunderbolt 3 support. And he also said he had the second revision of that motherboard. I said, well, the proof is in the looking. It's not in the documentation. So when you guys ask me to take a look at something, if I don't have it in hand to see it, I have to research it. And I don't mind doing that. I'm happy to. But the information I give you is based on what I find. If I can't find it, you're going to have to tell me. Uh, but then I can reinforce it and tell you what you're looking for. Because then I proceeded to let him know where that is at. Typically, your Thunderbolt card is going to be straight across from wherever that connection's at. And as far as I can tell, it has something to do, I think, with the root port selector. If you look at that on an ASUS motherboard that supports Thunderbolt 3, you can select the root port selector according to the PCI slot where you're at. With Gigabyte, you cannot. You have to figure out what slot it goes in. They don't tell you because I think the root port selector, which should be a setting in the BIOS, is hardwired to a specific slot. So that's where we are with that. So I told him typically it's straight across. But if it's not, when you power your machine up, if it doesn't come on, if it doesn't turn on, don't sweat it. Power it down. Change the slot. Power back up. You should be in business. Anyway, a little tidbit of information. It's all about the results. 
So we've done the unboxing, the install. We did the spec check. We've talked about the technology. We've done the drivers, which is kind of with the technology. And I'm going to put up a link up that talks about some issues with the past driver with the BSOD, so you guys will have it. Now the big deal is some tests. And uh, that was kind of an eye-opener because the tests I wanted to use from last time, I couldn't. Uh, and it's all about, I don't need to test the CPU. I want to test the GPU. Now later on, that may be the case. But to me, the most important tests are the real-world tests. And those are that say, do this, show me that, gives me some idea of what I want to do. One test I was looking forward to was the one, for example, from Blackmagic. Well, the new Blackmagic RAW only works on a Mac. I told someone, you know, that works, and I went to download it, and uh, it's not on a PC yet. But that would be a test I would want to, want to try and check out. A couple of other tests that I would like to try, and I'm going to get this machine back up and show you, so uh, stay with me. Well, this is interesting. The RTX 3080 is supposed to be a two-slot card. It will not fit in the machine if you're going to have Thunderbolt 3. Let me show you. Okay, I'm going to use this screwdriver for a good example. As we look down here, if you'll notice the slot, you can see the slot, but you can barely see the side next to the video card. The video card overlaps that just enough where that slot cannot be used. So if you're going to have a 3080, the 3080 would have to go down here to be able to put Thunderbolt 3 in there. So let's see what happens. I've had people ask me before about using that slot down there, and I said, you don't want to do that. We don't have a choice if we're going to have Thunderbolt 3. So let's see what happens if we were to try to put the video card down next to that last slot where the Glow Trends card is at. That's interesting. So it's all about, you know, priorities and trade-offs. We know a 2080 Ti will fit in the case, and we have to decide what are the priorities. We, we, this motherboard purpose is for the two I.O. cards that come with it, Thunderbolt 3, which is PCI Express 3, and the M.2 card, which is PCI Express 4. And because we've had difficulty with the root port selector, we cannot put Thunderbolt 3 in that second 8-lane slot. Change one thing changes everything. But you cannot put an RTX 3080 with a Thunderbolt 3 card next to it. So I am of the suspicion that we are going to lose this last slot if we keep this card in here. We'll see. I never expected that to be an issue. That's one of the neat things about doing this is that we can show you guys what works and what doesn't work. You know, we can read this stuff until the cows come home, but uh, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. That's fascinating. Wouldn't have known it if I hadn't tried it. So with the Glow Trends card, let's see now. So we have a 16-lane slot and a 16-lane slot. The Glow Trends card is in the last 8-lane slot, and that has that's a Glow Trends Sky. It's got four NVMe drives on it, self-bifurcated card. So let's move the video card and see what kind of spacing we got. Thunderbolt is out, no go. So priorities. If you put an RTX 3080 in here, you cannot have, you don't lose just, wow. The RTX 3080 is wider, and uh, I didn't realize the thickness as I was looking and comparing the, the 3080 to the uh, 2080, but uh, wow, that's, a, that's, that's significant. So what we have to do is prioritize what we want to do. If we want the RTX 3080 in here to do rendering with the CUDA core account we've got, then we will not have Thunderbolt 3. If Thunderbolt 3 is a priority, which it is, then we have to figure out where this card's going to go. If we put this card in this last slot, then we have to take out the NVMe card. That's an interesting trade-off. Now the question is, will this go down here? I don't know. I'm going to pull out the Glow Trends card. We're going to find out. And I'm going to put this in an anti-static bag. For those of you with an X570 chipset, that's the card you want. Glow Trends Sky. Self-bifurcated. we got a video up on that. Wow. We originally had to disconnect the USB connector to the front of the case because there wasn't enough room with the Glow Trends Sky card to have that connected. This connector is just too fat. So I'm going to put it back on. And since we're going to lose that last eight-lane slot, let's see what the BIOS does because the BIOS is set to initialize the first slot. And we're going to be putting the video card down in this second slot. And then we're going to see if we can put Thunderbolt 3 in there. So I'll set Thunderbolt aside for the moment. Let's pull the video card. And we're going into two positions. So I have a bracket here in the back I need to pull out. For those of you that are eager to build your TRX40 platform, I think you're going to find this fascinating because those slot alignments are a standard slot alignment. And this really brings up some interesting questions. So I'm glad we're going through this before some of you guys do. So, so prioritization, we have two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots. So because of the video card width being too thick, 
and this being a priority. Let's see if we can go down here to the second 16 lane slot and we'll be sitting right on top of the NVMe which is in those last two slots. And so now that eight lane slot becomes unusable. This eight lane slot becomes usable and that 16 lane slot becomes usable. So the video card's down here, the NVMe card can be here and Thunderbolt can be right there. Let's see what happens. So the concern we had over this last slot number four, we know that there are eight PCI lanes uh, on that 16 lane slot. It's 16 lanes, all these are 16 lanes mechanically, but they're only 216 and 28 electrically. And that last slot that we've been trying to figure out how we could have access to it, right there it is. Now we have plenty of clearance right here next to our stuff. And I use this screwdriver. I don't think I need to get out the, the uh, endoscope to show it. Plenty of clearance right there between those cables and the fans. So that won't be an issue. Let's see what the uh, computer does when it finds this in the uh, bottom slot. The BIOS is set by default to initialize video from slot one. Okay, video cards installed. We'll get our eight pin power taps put back in. We'll do the two and then do the six. I go to the top one first, then I'll come to the bottom one. You know, it'd be nice if these manufacturers would get together on some of this stuff instead of putting us through hoops like this. Yeah, I should have brought that over first. Okay, I'm getting good at this. Okay, we'll bring in Thunderbolt three, get our power back up. Because we're in a different slot, I expect Windows to uh, have to go through the uh, enumeration process because the BIOS is going to re-enumerate the video card, re-recognize. And since it's going to recognize in a different slot, I'm not sure how that would affect Thunderbolt. So what I want to do is get my cables lined up so that they're all out of the way. I'm going to leave this card out until we get video up and running. But if you'll notice, they're crossed over. So I'm just going to set it aside. Nothing touching. Nothing connected. So video's in. I've got one screw holding the video card down. It's secure. So what we need to do now is power up, see what we got. Wow. I tell you, I don't know about you guys, but this has been educational. The video card's in. We will plug in the monitor back to HDMI. Power. Turn that on. And we should be ready to power up. Okay, let's see what happens. Remember, Thunderbolt 3 is out. Only the video card is in. And the video card is in the second 16-lane slot. So it's going to take a little longer to boot while Windows figures out where the display adapter is at. And I can now see the lights on the EVGA against the uh, heat sink that I did not really notice before. I would have seen, but once the lid's on this and this is stuck on a shelf, I won't see any of that. So let's see what's going to happen. I may have to put the video card back and uh, tell it to look at the different slot. It should figure it out. Yep, it did a post. Just for grins, I'm going to go in the BIOS and take a look. I've got video up on screen. Took a little longer to boot. I'll show you what I see. So you can see what I see. And we will go to System Info. We'll go to Settings, I.O. Ports, and right there, Initial Display Output on PCI Slot 1. I'm going to double click on that, and we are actually in PCI Slot number 3. That'll make the computer boot a little faster. PCI Express Slot number 3 is that slot. And all the slots are set for auto. And the menu for Thunderbolt is gone. It'll come back when I plug the card back in. We need to get this part fixed first. So now we change the initial display output to PCI Express slot 3. So what I want to do is reboot the computer and then I want to power down. So I boot this back up from a cold boot and we'll see if it boots any faster before we go back into Windows before the driver hits it to re-enumerate. So one thing at a time. So let's go this step first. F10, I like that. If you notice it shows when I'm ready to press and get out of the BIOS, the last thing modified. Initial display output, PCI Express slot 1, is now going to be PCI Express slot number 3, the third slot. So we're going to say OK and reboot. Now I expect the system to shut down and come back up. If it doesn't, I'll turn it off because I want to do this from a cold boot. The reason I'm changing that, I want the system to boot a little bit faster. I could also tell it not to look at the RAM every time, but with that much RAM, I want it to look at that RAM every time. OK, post. OK, I see the BIOS. I'm going to shut it off. OK, I'm going to drain the power, turn off the power supply. Cold boot is very essential sometimes trying to diagnose a computer. Power supply is back on. Power button. We'll see if it'll post a little faster this time. I always say the more I, the more I learn, the more I realize how little I know. And uh, the more I need to know, the more I need to learn. And about the time we get this figured out, it changes. Post it a little bit faster. Initially with the video card in slot 1, the RTX 3080, the, the computer seemed to boot faster uh, with this card than it did with the 2080 Ti, which I found very interesting. But now... I can't tell it's booting any faster, even though I changed it to boot slot 3. The logic to recognize and do what it does is pretty fascinating. So we'll get back into Windows once it's ready. Yeah, Windows is coming up again. I want Windows to go through the process. We'll go through a cycle. 
and then we'll come back and put Thunderbolt 3 back in. Remember, the reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to avoid a BSOD. Okay, Windows is back up. It doesn't see the display adapter. I can tell by looking at it. I'll show you what I mean. It's coming back up. It blinked on me. Now it recognizes correctly. Cool. So I'm going to go to Device Manager, and I'm going to double check and make sure everything looks good. And if we see our display adapter, and we do. Okay. Enumeration. Successful. Okay, now we're power down again. Thunderbolt back in. All because I was going to show you guys this drive. If I hadn't done that, if I hadn't plugged in Thunderbolt 3, you wouldn't know about the video card in Thunderbolt. So, amazing. Okay, system's off. Power supply's off. Drain it. Drained. Unplug. Overhead. Okay, we'll take our Thunderbolt 3 card, and it can now go in the 8-lane slot where it has to be. It has to live in that slot. We know that for a fact. And the video card is happy where it's at now. We know that for a fact. So for those that are excited about having four slots, we've got access to three slots. We have to decide our trade-offs. If we're going to have an RTX 3080 in here, we have to put it in this slot. Now, if someone says they want to put an RTX 3090 in here, and we have somebody that wanted to put two 3090s in here, that, that might be a problem. Because if you put two 3090s in here, you're not going to have Thunderbolt. And if you're not going to have Thunderbolt, you can pick a different motherboard. The whole thing about the TRX40 Designator is being able to use the resources that came with it and to be able to put in a high-end video card. So if you put in an RTX, uh, even one RTX 3090 in here, you lose slot four. If you put an RTX 3080 in here, you lose that fourth slot, uh, which is, uh, I think, significant. But you have, you have to you know, weigh those options. And uh, we have one subscriber. God bless him. He's in, uh, I believe, Columbia. Turned out he had a bad CPU, and uh, I've not seen too many bad CPUs. Not in a very long time. I think the last bad CPU I saw was probably like 20 years ago. But um, anyway, he changed motherboards because we thought that's what it was. Wasn't the motherboard, changed CPU so he can get his system up and running. The reason, the point, and I'm telling you this, you don't know this stuff until you test it, until you try it. And I hope this helps you to understand why some of the times that I don't have a pretty wiring harness in here is because I'm doing this. I'm going through this stuff trying to help you guys and show you guys. Y'all are learning this as I'm seeing it because I'm seeing it for the first time. And I find it absolutely fascinating. Uh, wow. How many times have I told someone the video card needs to be in that first 16-lane slot? Ain't going to happen with this setup. Let's go overhead. First 16-lane slot is now available. Second 16-lane slot is now open. We have an RTX 3080. So if we went with an RTX 2080 Ti, which is what we had, it would work. But if we want a 3080, it has to go down here. But then we lose slot number four. The purpose of this is CUDA cores. And we still got the test to get to. So now my curiosity is, I'm not going to leave it in, but I'm going to hold it up there and see what it looks like on that slot. And the reason this is significant is because if we're going to be doing NVMe RAID, we've got to have this card. So this card's already got four drives in it. So now let's see what we've got with the sandwich. It fits the space. So we can put this card down here where the video card would normally go, right there. And that fits. Space, space. In fact, that's a pretty interesting setup. So video card in the second 16-lane slot, the M.2 quad card by Gigabyte, which is the RS card, in the first 16-lane slot. We have Thunderbolt 3, which is taking up four PCI lanes in an eight-lane slot. And that last slot, that last slot is SOL. It is what it is. You got to prioritize and decide what your, what your uh, options and motives are. Now, if we were to go back to a 2080 Ti, we'd have all four slots. But if we want the CUDA cores for rendering, Here's where we are. I'm sticking with the 3080. I just want to take a look at that and see how that fit. That's nice and thin. Doesn't take up much space. The shroud with the fans is the problem. The shroud with the fans needs to be uh, a little bit narrower. Now, if you had a custom cooling solution on there, that, that might work for you. But working with the stock, it is what it is. I may look into that to see if we can get some thinner fans to put on there, which would be a matter of taking that cowling off because the cowling on there won't work and if the fans are sitting on the cowling then you've got to have a custom cowling so then you may be at a EK water block EKW water block so that's a, that's an option but anyway video cards in Thunderbolt 3 is in secured I want to power up and make sure this works we're gonna try this to test it and then we're gonna go look at some tests blows my mind okay card is in powers all set everybody's secure we are now going to plug in power Turn on power, energize. So of the resources that are prioritized, we have an EVGA RTX 3080 installed. We have Thunderbolt 3 installed, of which we're getting ready to verify. And we will be able to install our uh, M.2 quad card so that we can do a hardware bootable RAID. How's that saying go? Things that make you go, hmm? Well, it is what it is. Wow. 
the machine's a little slower to boot, even though we pre-selected what slot to go to for video. Not much we can do about that. So once this is back, oh, I heard it post. So once this is back up and running, the fan stops spinning once it does post, and then we will go back in. Now what I'm curious is, is when we start rendering with this card, are those fans going to spin up? I don't know, but that's something we're going to share with you later when we can, which goes to the test, which I'll show you some stuff when we get in there. I will say while we're waiting on this to come up to look at uh, Thunderbolt, if you have DaVinci Resolve and you're rendering with the free version, you're not rendering with the GPU. You're rendering with the CPU. If you want to render with the GPU, you have to have the paid version. How do I know that? Because I was double checking on the test when I was getting ready to run it. I said, oh, well, we have a license coming. I didn't order it right away. I was kind of slow to get in the stream on that. So when we get the um, USB controller to um, edit with, then we can do some tests. There's also a test that would probably put the most strain on a machine, but you've got to have, and it's the one from Puget, but you've got to have the... Um, Adobe software running on your machine to run the test. So I'm, I don't have any of that kind of stuff done. The most I've done are the virtual instruments so that we could show one audio interface. But as I start installing software, I'm, I'm less inclined to monkey with the machine because I need it running. Anyway, let's check Thunderbolt 3 and see if it works before we go back to do the tests on the video card. Okay, we are back up and running. Let's go back and check Control Panel, Device Manager. Our display is good. Let's see if we see our, yep, there it is. At the end of the list, the Thunderbolt controller. It shows up, and there are no errors on any of the uh, ports, upstream or downstream. Those are all good. And the Thunderbolt 3 is in the list of system devices. Okay, now we're going to go to the next step, round robin. And I wanted to show you, I wanted to plug in this drive. I want to make sure Thunderbolt 3 works and how the driver works. So I'm going to plug this in, but I'm going to show you Windows. Instead of having a camera where you see that and this, you'll just have to watch that when I do this. So I'm going to plug this in. Look in the bottom right-hand corner when I plug this drive in. That drive is not a Thunderbolt drive, but that drive, as you notice that just popped up, that drive is a USB-C drive. But because this Thunderbolt 3 card has full support, in other words, we've got BIOS support, which gives us Thunderbolt 3 native, we've also got legacy support, which is Thunderbolt 1 and 2. But my point is, because this, this card is USB-C, it works. But if I had a Thunderbolt 3 device that I plugged into a USB-C port, it would not work. And this is some of the stuff I've been trying to emphasize and drive home the point. But as you can see, when the device popped up, we're seeing that drive, and uh, it works. So the next step, when we do Thunderbolt 3 with an audio interface, it'll work. But I made sure we didn't have any BSODs, and that's why I've stepped through this process. That was the key thing. And we discovered that, wow, wow, we can't put the video card, a 3080, in slot one. So anyway, back to the computer. So when I unplug this, that'll go away. Just that simple. Because we have plug-and-play support. These are neat little drives. I originally bought this as a test. This was one of the first ones. I think it's 500 gig. But I've recommended these before. Uh, we have these on the list for someone that's interested in drive storage. Great little device. Fits in your pocket. Tiny. Only connection that's exposed is the bottom connection where the cable plugs in for USB-C. Comes with a carbiner. Anyway, that's SanDisk. Okay, video card's good. Thunderbolt 3 is good. Test. And I can take my strap off. And the test I want to show you guys, there are several. There's actually a list of five. I'm going to show you the list. I'll put a link up to it. And I'm just going to cut the chase so we can cut this off. The three tests I found the most interesting. Number one, Blender Bench. It won't work. I've tried it on several different machines. It, it doesn't like, even with OpenCL, the uh, AMD, let's see, what did we test that on? We tried it on an AMD WX7100 and an AMD WX, that's a Radeon Pro, WX9100. It wouldn't work on either one of those. But when we went to an NVIDIA video card, it worked on the RTX 2080 Ti. I expect it's going to work on the RTX 3080. So Blender, I think, is a great test to try. I'll put up a link to it. The other two tests I want to recommend, and I'll mention, is um, the Chaos Group V-Ray. Now, V-Ray, I've tried that on five different machines. I even tried it on a six-year-old machine. And that test is the only test that will work on all the machines. I think it's worth trying. Take a look at it. I'll uh, put a link up for some scores uh, if, the, if that means anything to you. But the third test, probably the most important test, which is the neatest test, is the one I mentioned from Unigen. And that's superposition. That is a cool test. 
orally and visually. Again, I'm not going to run it, but I'll mention it to you, and I'm going to show you some scores and uh, let you see, and I'll compare as I flip two screens because I haven't run it yet on the 3080 Ti. And that part of where I'm going to run it, I'm going to let the audio run as well because I want that in the recording, but I'm not going to have it in the video. But I want to capture that, uh, and I'll show you what the results are because that is a cool test. So let's take a look. Now, for what it's worth, that score came up 69 and 66. And that, if you'll notice, right here it shows on the Ryzen 7 1800X. And that system had a Radeon Pro WX7100 in it. Not a real good high score, but it is what it is. The next one we ran it on was a second generation Threadripper. That's a 2950. And that got a score of 12,467. It shows the uh, frames, and when you watch the test, it'll keep up here in the upper right-hand corner. It'll show you all that as it's, as it's running. And that particular system says that's an AMD Vega 10 8-gig demo 16-gig Vega 10 XT. Well, that's actually sold, or was sold, as an AMD Radeon Pro WX9100. That's what that card is, but that's what it shows. Anyway, that's the score. And then the third score we came out with was 18,364. And it shows, it shows a lot of really interesting information running on that EVGA card. And again, this is on the TRX40 Designator motherboard with a 3970X processor. And that was with the RTX 2080 Ti. So now we're going to run it with the RTX 3080. This will be a blast. And this is Unigen Superposition 1.1. Except the EULA. And the other test that we did not run, we'll put up a link to all those tests that you can run through for yourself. Cinebench two years ago was great, but Cinebench doesn't test the GPU now. So I thought, what's up with that? And because of the licensing restrictions with SpecView Perf, I wasn't going to run that either. Now, we've got this set with the default performance, the preset 1080p medium. We can also do custom 1080p high, extreme, 4K optimized, and 8K optimized. All I'm going to do is 1080p medium. That's the default. The graphics API is DirectX. We're not going to use OpenGL. So here we go, and I'll be quiet. And this is the benchmark game or virtual reality. You're going to love this because i, I got to tell you, that is orally and visually stunning. So I'm going to do a screen capture, Windows flag, print screen, and we have that capture. 18.405. So we're running on a Threadripper 3. This is a Gigabyte TRX40 Designator motherboard. And that was with rendering on the EVGA GeForce RTX 3080, 10 gigs. I will say when this did the rendering, those fans kicked in on the uh, GPU. And they're still running. But I find that fascinating. So we've done five things. Don't need to go through them again. I talked about five tests. I mentioned three. I'll put a link up to the others. This to me was the most significant test You've seen the score. And I think the question of the day is, uh, if you're going to put a video card in a machine, what video card do you want? And if you're going to buy, which we think still is bang for the buck, the RTX 30 series, which one are you going to get? Do you go with a 3070, a 3080, or a 3090? You've seen what we've encountered as we went through this. If you were to put a 3090 in this second slot, because it takes up three slots, you're going to have to figure out some way for your... Uh, you know what you're going to have to have is a right angle USB 3.0 connector. That head of that 19 pin slash 20 pin. You're going to need a right, in, right angle connector because that's got to get down and can't be any higher than a heat sink that's sitting across where two NVMe drives will be on the end because the video card's sitting on top of that. PITA. So anyway, we have the resources. We have three usable slots. Slot number four is not. We changed the video card. You guys see what we're going on, what's, what we're dealing with. So I hope you enjoyed this. I want to say Merry Christmas. I love you guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate everyone subscribing. I think we're ready for the next video. And after the holidays, I've already told you it's going to be about that drive. So we're on to the next video. Merry Christmas. We're out.